Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 1000 series PLC, Bricks Do More Ethernet IP Remote I.O. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So we will be utilizing Ethernet IP to connect the BRICS Do More PLC as remote I.O. on a productivity system. Now the productivity series of controllers can use explicit and implicit messaging techniques of Ethernet IP to optimize data uh, exchanges across the network. Now explicit messages or messaging means that the data message that are transmitted will contain all everything that's needed to, in order to respond or decode the message. It is normal client server relationship with instructions explicitly spelled out in the data message. And this communication happens at times that the client requests the information. So typically you would do that through your program itself. Now implicit messaging means the data messages are streamlined and the device is configured ahead of time to know what to do with the data. This is used for time critical messages and it functions like a typical scanner adapter relationship and implicit messaging is real time. It has the ability to copy data with minimal additional information because both ends already know exactly what each uh, bit and byte are. And that's what we'll be using today on our Bricks Do More PLC back to the productivity series is the implicit messaging. It's gonna happen in the background and we're gonna set it to about 10 milliseconds. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to call up our do more designer here and what we'll do is go into the um, system settings so we'll go to uh, main menu plc and we'll go down to the system configuration here now we can get through this way or we can go right to our project browser here and hit system configuration here either one will get us the same location and the first thing we'll do is check on our um, Ethernet um, or internal Ethernet uh, port configuration and what we want to do is we want to ensure that we have a fixed or static IP address so we'll hit the configure here and you can see here that we do so we're going to actually set the IP address here so there's our IP address our subnet mask our gateway and the DNS server if we if we need it in this case here we don't we're just interested more with the IP address and the subnet mask which must match uh, our the same network that we're using for our productivity series just cancel that so that's our internal next what we'll do is take a look at the IO so if you take a look at the bricks IO right here we actually have um, the uh, BX-DM1E-18ED13, so 18 IO. And what you'll notice is that we have here is our inputs. So they go from zero to nine. Our outputs are from um, Y0 to seven. And then we have analog on board. So we have actually two points, one input, one output, and WX0 and WY0. So what we'll do is bring in that plus a few more extra I.O. in order to control this uh, Bricks Doom Bar. Now let's go back to our CPU configuration and we will go to our Ethernet IP adapter, which is right here. And what we want to do is make sure that that's enabled and then we'll go into and click that setting. And here we go. Here we have our, our setup for our Ethernet IP. And what you'll notice here is we can set the maximum concurrent sessions. We're actually going to set it for four. We're going to leave it as a default. The device name, we're going to again leave it as a default, which says do more Ethernet IP server or adapter. We have a client inactivity timeout. We set it for 60 seconds, but we can set it to anything you'd like. Um, and then our TCP port, um, we default to uh, 44818 which is the default location. So all these are default uh, values that we put in here. And what you'll see is that with the 16 concurrent, we also have four IO adapters that we can program. Each adapter has two blocks that can be programmed, an input block and an output block. 
So we have eight all together, blocks of information. So the first block here, we're gonna uh, enable, this is for the uh, explicit messaging. So we're not gonna do that, but we're gonna leave that as a default. Then we have IO messaging, IO messaging access control, which we will enable as an input. And we, we select the memory type, which is X, which is our input. And it goes from starting point zero to the count of 32. So we're gonna bring in 32 bits into our um, productivity series. And you'll see mapped range is X0 to X31. So we need four bytes of information. In block number two, again, everything defaults. We're gonna, again, ensure that we have the IO messaging selected here and our network error will clear the messages. So that's ideal for if we're doing a remote IO like we are. Then our memory block here, we're gonna do Y or the output and starting at zero and again, 32. That'll bring in those uh, ones that we have on our controller, the physical outputs that we have on our controller. Y zero to Y 31 and again, four bytes. Then what we do is we energize or click on block number three. We, in, we enable that and our memory block starts at WX zero and we're gonna put four in even though we have just one. So it gives us a few extra. So we have eight bytes of information there. And again, on our output, we make sure that it's cleared and we have WY equals zero to four. So again, another eight bytes there. Then also you'll notice that if we look at block number one, our instant uh, for our explicit or our, our connection point, I should say, is 101. So block one is 101, so that's our input. Our output is 102. Our analog input is 103. And our analog output is 104. So we have to remember the, that um, information. So is it okay? So that is our Ethernet IP adapter already to go and now we can take a look at our scanner um, from our productivity series. Okay from there. Now one thing before we go though is that you'll notice that in our um, system configuration under your IP settings the um, under the block here okay, there is uh, our connection points again we must remember that so we can either uh, Write that down or just re remember that's block one, 101, block two, 102, etc. Now, one thing we should also do is once we uh, have that, we're gonna just put an end statement up here, which you see here. And then what we can do is transfer this over to our controller. So write it into our PLC. And you can see that we've already done that. We're already online with our controller itself. The last thing we'll do is take a look at the system information. Again, we, our system information can be found here, or we can go to our PLC and go to system information. And what we can put, when we call this up, you'll notice that my key switch, what mode it's in, PLC's in run mode right now. But what I'm interested in here is scan times. So my minimum scan time is 326 microseconds. My average is 360. 64 68 microseconds and then we have our maximum time which is 3.1 milliseconds so we want this update time to happen every 10 milliseconds so our 3.1 is fine we're well within that uh, time frame so we just want to check that all right so we'll just hit okay so looks like our bricks do more is all set to go now let's take a look at our productivity series. And under our productivity series, we wanna go into the setup and hardware configuration. And once again, what I like to do is ensure that we have on our CPU itself, we've set our ethernet port to a static IP address, which is set there. So it's 192.168.140. And so that's all set. Then if we go into the IP, Ethernet IP, we can now bring in the generic client. We can click 
and drag that over or double click on that generic client to call this up. So you see, I've, I, got, I already have this programmed. It's the BRX scanner. There we go. And we'll just move that down here. So with the scanner, we used the structure. We called it BX scanner. Our device name was BRX scanner. Our IP address is the IP address now for our bricks, which is 192.168.111. And then what we do is the TCP port is the default. 44818 and what we do is select this and we add IO message what will happen is message number one will then pop up and we have now three settings here we have our target to originator our input we have our um, originator to target which is an output and we have a configuration data so on the target to originator it's multitask the RPI time or the response time uh, that we want is going to be 10 milliseconds. Our assembly or connection point is going to be 101. So then our message we're going to do is into a data array called bricks uh, input and we're going to have a 32 bit and it's going to be one element. So that, there's our 32 bits X. Um, 0 to x31 and our bricks will correspond to this 32 bits we have coming in here. We hit the output and again we set our, our update time of 10 milliseconds. We have 102 as our connection uh, point and we set our bricks output again 32 bits so one element. Then what we do is, again, we click this button, we add another I.O. Uh, message, and we can now put our analog onto this scanner. So our target to originator or input will be our Bricks analog input, and we're going to put four elements. Each element is going to be a 16-bit um, register, which gives us a total of eight bytes. So we have to, again, Make sure that you match both ends up to know exactly how many bytes we have or it will cause errors. Then we have our originator to target or our output. 10 milliseconds again. 104 is our connection point. Then we have our bricks analog output and number of elements again is four. Total bytes is eight. And then our configuration, we ensure that we have this disabled for both the message number two and message number one. Okay. So that's it for setting up our um, Ethernet IP scanner on our Proactivity Series controllers. Okay. We'll just uh, hit OK on that because we really didn't change anything. And we can then close that down. And if we, and right now what we're gonna do is set up our, our IO here. And the first thing we'll do is we will um, Oh, one thing I did forget is if we go back to the setup hardware and look at our scanner, what we can do is hit this monitor button down here. When we hit the monitor button, it'll actually allow us to append or add uh, the Ethernet IP scanner into our data view so that we can monitor the I.O. Okay. So once we have that, we'll close that down. So we'll, let's just check the, uh, uh, first of all, let's check the uh, scan time, CPU, get CPU scan time. And you see our average scan time right now is 1.1 milliseconds. So we're well within that 10 millisecond time frame that we're looking for, for the Ethernet IP update time to the remote IO. So, so far we're, we're good. All right, so now let's take a look at the program itself. And under the program, what we do is we enable the BRICS scanner message one and message number two. So those uh, two messages to be enabled so that we automatically will do that. Then what we do is take the first BRICS input and we set the first output with it. And then we take the simulator card on our uh, productivity series and we turn on 
the corresponding output. So that's our entire program. We then download that to our Proactivity series. So let's take a look at the hardware that we have here. So here we go. There's our Proactivity P1540 with our ethernet port. And then we have our bricks BX-DM1E 18ED13. And you can see here that we have our input uh, zero uh, connected to our um, capacitive type proximity sensor, CK1. And what you'll notice is that when this input comes on, this is the X that we've mapped, and when there's our output comes on. So that's exactly what our program is doing up here on our screen. So you see here, if it's off, then the output is off. If we go on, the output's on. So again, this is happening every 10 milliseconds. So uh, we're talking 100 times a second that we're actually updating our I.O. independent of really any logic in our bricks itself. So very quick and very easy to implement this uh, type of protocol. And the next what we have is we have our switches here. So if we were to turn on our first switch, the first output uh, then comes on from the, the bricks. And we can go two, three, and four. And you can see that is quite quick in terms of the response time. Turn that one off and it turns off. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.